Hey, welcome back to this series of interviews on state and local candidates in the state of California. Today, we are going to be talking to Lori Mills, who is attempting to run and turn red. The a portion of Los Angeles County that extends from Beverly Hills to the border of, of Westlake and into portions of Ventura County itself. Welcome, Lori. Hi, how are you today? Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, you're very welcome. Hey, you know, so like describe a, a, a little bit the, this territory if for this office that you are running for in your own words. Well, the district is huge. It actually starts in the southeast side of Camarillo, goes Newberry Park, Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, Agora Hills, Oak Park, Calabasas, Topanga, Beverly Glen, Bel Air, Brentwood, Pacific Palisades, and Malibu. And then we have the beautiful cities of Simi Valley and Moore Park. Oh, there you go. Well, you know, I know that part of town uh, for me uh, is some of the best places for me to ride my motorcycle. So I <laughs> thoroughly enjoy that, you know, going up and down the canyons to the beach and all that kind of stuff is yes. uh, it's a beautiful country with beautiful people that uh, represent a, a, a fairly broad diversity of, of L.A. and Ventura counties. So um, what brought you from your from a background perspective uh why, uh, why are you running? What qualifications brought you to this crux in your life where you've got your name on a ballot? Wow. Yeah, it's kind of a crazy story. And it was a long process for me to tell you the truth. And it started at church one day when my pastor said, we're losing this country. What are you willing to give up for it? And I had to ponder that because that that's a big statement. Um, I had a great career. I was the equestrian estate director for Berkshire Hathaway. So as far as qualifications for the job, I have 30 years in contract negotiation. Um, but what happened with me was during the unconstitutional emergency order and lockdown, I caught a segment of my son's English class. And the teacher was having the kids read congressional testimony by Democrats implying Republicans were racist. And understand it wasn't the teacher's fault. It was the curriculum. So once the schools opened up again, I went into the school library and it looked like a left-wing activist center with books like Defund the Police, Transgender in America. So I bought about $1,000 worth of books on the economy, on the stock market, on things that would empower children and told the, worked with the principal and the school board and all I said, I said, you don't have to get rid of any books, but you need to balance it. So I got that library balanced. Um, it wasn't long after that, I started getting notices home asking how my son wanted to identify. And that really bothered me. So after that, there was another step that happened. I got a fluke invitation to Mar-a-Lago. I went to Mar-a-Lago for the Take Back Congress event Everybody I met there, I kind of told them what was going on. And they said, why don't you run for office? And I was like, wow, it just seems like everything kept prodding me in that way. And so I looked into it and I'm like, okay, four days a week in Sacramento, huge pay cut. I have nothing to gain by this, but we're losing our state. My son and my daughter are less free than I was. My grandchild is less free than I than their parents were. And we're going in the wrong direction. So being a native Californian, born in Santa Monica, I grew up in Laguna Beach, lived in Ventura County for, you know, for the last 30 years. I decided, you know what? It's time to serve the people because the people of California deserve to be represented and, and not ruled. Um, so I pulled papers the day I got back from Mar-a-Lago and now I'm the Republican nominee for California State Assembly 42. There you go. Well, wow. Well, you know, it, um, that's a very native California story, by the way, I, you know, and, and I, I, cause I, I grew up in, in the area as well. I'm an Orange County boy originally. And, yeah, and me moved. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, pretty, pretty much. I mean, you know, like, yeah, I used to go down to Laguna a lot. But um, that story of Native Californians, 
uh, coming to want to give back to the state is not an uncommon one. And um, when you when you look at that and, and and your motivations, what do you hope to achieve in terms of uh, things that you want to get done in Sacramento? Uh, should you be elected? Well, there's there's so many things. <laughs> I mean, first of all, the cost of living for our families. Jackie Irwin, who I'm voted, uh, I'm running against. She voted, um, once to st strike Kevin Kiley's bill to suspend the gas tax. The other time she didn't vote. Then she voted to raise the gas tax and then started a committee to figure out why gas prices are high. We need to cut the cost of living for our families. The Howard Jarvis Taxpayer Association gave her three Ds and two Fs on her small business legislation, on tax legislation, and they endorsed my campaign. It's time to cut the red tape. It's time to cut regulations and lower the cost of living for our families because my children should be able to buy a home here someday. And the cost of living is out of control. People are deciding whether they're going to fill their tank or whether they're going to feed their families. And that's not okay. You know, all in the while, all these handouts are happening for people that aren't working. There's people working two, three jobs to keep their families afloat. And we're seeing a massive exodus from our state. I love this state. I'm not going to give it up to a bunch of woketopians who have this policy that is is destroying us yeah well it's very interesting um because the the issues that you just described um uh the the cost of living home uh ownership affordability um these kinds of issues are normally associated with uh the, the woke part of the world and not normally associated with republicans but it i'm hearing from you that uh, that this is a universal state issue, regardless of party. Am I am I hearing that correct? A hundred percent. You know, because you know, other issues I want to deal with crime, other the homeless crisis I want to deal with. It's time for the people of California to be represented and not ruled, and not owned by lobbyists in Sacramento, and the party. It's time to treat the people of California as people. We're all Americans and it's time for this division to stop. It's time for us to get back to the center and work for the people. And it's, that's not happening right now. It's just not. And for those that are out there going, ooh, Lori Mills, Republican, ah, stop it. Look at what's happening in your life. You know, what's going on in Sacramento is not benefiting anybody in this state. And I don't care if you're Democrat. I don't care if you're Republican. And I'm willing to reach across the aisle and work with any sane Democrat. I wish the Kennedy Democrats would come back. The real liberals who cared about free speech. Um, I'm not coming here to play pol party politics. I'm here to just speak for the people, to represent the people, and to represent my family and everybody that's losing their livelihoods and losing their lives in this state right now. Well, that's a very broad uh, goal and message. And um, when you talk to people in 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 this district, uh, do you see that sentiment all the way across the political spectrum? Um, I do. You know, I think that there's a lot of people that get stuck and they think they're running against Donald Trump. This race has nothing to do with Donald Trump. And, um, you know, they hear that, you know, I voted for Trump. I will admit it. I, I actually think our country was a lot better off three years ago than it is now. Mm -hmm. My retirement was great. Um, crime was down. The borders were safe. You know, we weren't leaving Americans behind mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. And... Um, it's the policies that are destroying the country. And again, this demonizing of people that is, it's hurting everybody. And it's time for the American citizens to stop that. Look at what affects your life. Look at how you bring home food to your family. Look at 
smash and grab robberies. Let's put an end to this stuff. You know, Jackie Irwin voted to end cash bail and reduce criminal sentencing. She voted to raise the limits for theft. So it inspired smash and grab robberies. We're having Chilean gangs fly into California for home invasion robberies. It's time to put victims before criminals and entire law enforcement's hands. You know, Ronald Reagan once said, we must reject to the idea that every time laws are broken, society's guilty and not the lawbreaker. It's time to just have common sense again and just put the partisan politics aside. Let's work together and make our state great again. There you go. Okay, well, um, a very wide open message to, that clearly transcends party in, in this case, which is um, another uh, a theme that I am hearing more and more about what, what is happening in the state of California, that it is a people sea change that is going on as opposed to a party sea change that is going on. Um, what's and I and I'll just you know throw this out there because uh, other candidates that I've talked to the 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 tell me one of their big motivations is they're just sick and tired of um, the supermajority condition that exists in the state of California. What's your position on that? We need checks and balances again. You know, um, our founders designed this country with checks and balances, and California doesn't have that right now. We've got woke politicians throwing policies through that are extreme. <clears throat> you know, I know that one of the things that I've been hit on is I'm anti-abortion. Well, abortion is not at risk in California, but they've gone so extreme that they've just passed full term abortion. And am I against that a hundred percent? Now to set the record straight, because Jackie's like, Lori wants to ban abortion. I believe that if in the cases of rape, in the cases of incest, in the cases of a mother's life at risk, by all means, um, it should be safe and rare, as Bill Clinton once said. But when we have 60 million babies dying a year in California at late term, and now they want to do it up to 28 days after birth with perinatal abortion, I've got a huge problem with that. You wouldn't pull off the legs of a puppy. I don't know why you would want to pull off the legs and arm of a of a human being, but that's what they do to get them out. So um, just making that clear. Another thing, you know, Jackie Irwin voted to lower penalties for adults to have sex with kids as young as 14. These are extreme, extreme policies. And I just want checks and balances again. I want to be able to put up a stoplight and say, wait, 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 wait. You guys got to debate this. Let's. Let's talk reasonably about what you're putting through here, because right now they don't have to. They just put through whatever they want. And um, there's common sense solutions to all problems. But shoving through these woke agendas, putting critical race theory in our schools, um, putting shipping children to our state for gender surgery, that that's extreme. That's extreme. These kids. They don't know what they're, I was a tomboy growing up at a 13 years old and comfortable in my body like every young girl is. And right now you'd be calling me Larry, you know, and they're putting them through hormone, you know, therapies and doing surgeries on children. These kids could change their mind. You know, they're not old enough to make these decisions for themselves and shame on parents not letting them go through their process and figure out their own life because when they're adults, they can decide to do whatever they want. There you go. Well, um, checks and balances. Checks and balances. Yeah. We yeah. need to get back to the center. We This extreme left, extreme right, we need to be able to talk again and not just have character assassination or the politics of personal destruction, which I'm facing right now for my, my opponent. It's not about the policy, it's about destroying me. Well, all I have to say about that is if orange man bad is all she has, bring it, bring it. I wanna talk about her voting record. I wanna talk about making life better for Californians. 
I want to save my state. I want to save my state. This is an amazing place. And I want our families to grow up here. I want our families to be safe. I want life to be affordable. I want our planet clean and green, the trash on the freeways, the homeless encampments. It needs to stop. Um, and with the homeless, let's talk about that for a second, if you don't mind. Do you mind? Not at all, okay. because you know what? I We see them all the time. I live in LA, the, the LA area, just like you do, and actually, you know, and, and travel Skid around. Skid Row's everywhere. And the, Skid Row's everywhere it now. It's an everywhere problem, so it is It is a state problem. Yeah, so this is, this is something I really want to work on. Um, you know, with the homeless... Jackie Irwin missed two votes on the homeless, and then she voted to um, put a homeless encampment in the house next door to you, to rezone the property, put it in a grocery store that's vacant, and then also voted for crack pipes and injection sites. That's not the answer. We have a lot of bureaucrats making a lot of money on the homeless and not, not dealing with the problem. I believe that we need to work with the private sector who's done a much better job at this than we have. The government, I'm saying. I've been researching a lot and there's a great organization called Loaves and Fishes, for instance. And they have a place called Community First where the state actually allocated land. They built tiny homes out of way kind of from the public they do have a bus stop, so like people that are trying to get back on their feet can leave. Um, they have one section for those getting back on their feet. Our veterans need to be taken care of. They have another section for the mentally ill where they have doctor's visits, they get their medications. There's another section for those that are addicted where they get treatment. They grow their own food, they have job training, they work, they actually do pay rent, and it gives them back a sense of self-worth and hope. Because again, crack pipes and injection sites are not the answer. Um, living in California my whole life, I've had four incidents this year, and one of them I'll tell you about. I went to our state capitol twice this year, and I hadn't been there since I was a child. This should be a place where you can bring your family to celebrate our state. I was dropped off by my Uber. I opened the door. A naked man's walking toward me with a woman on a leash with her face painted red. This is not normal. This is not normal. And we should not accept it as normal. And I will be the bad guy. Sorry. I will work with the sheriff's department. They can't live on our beaches. They can't live on our streets. They can't live on our parks. And they can't defecate in your foyer or of your, of your office building. What's happening right now is turning us into a third world country. And the problem needs to be dealt with, not pushed under a rug. We need there to fund go. mental institutions again. A statement with a plan. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's uh, uh, refreshing. And um, gosh, it sounds like, you, you know, a uh, uh, when you get past the patina of what appears in the press of uh, positions, counter positions and all that kind of stuff. And one of the reasons I really like doing these interviews is, is that you actually get to hear that there's more thought behind the person that is running for office than uh, the, the, what, what you, what you get in a 30 second hit or a, uh, a, a mention as part of a list in some sort of overarching article about, you know, 50, 60 candidates that are going through the variety of seats that are, that are ongoing and basically looking at poll numbers. I, I think this is much more interesting. And I thank you very much for taking the time today to share some of these thoughts and let people hear, you know, what's behind the noggin. Well, you, something I've seen this year that's a little different, and I'm one of them, what we're seeing, I think, for the first time are citizens running for office. We're sick of career politicians playing musical chairs and nothing changes. And I think it's a beautiful thing. You know, 
if you think back to our founding, the shot heard around the world, Lexington and Concord, you had the Redcoats, the largest army in the world, and 150 farmers stood up and said no more. 150 farmers. And then, of course, the churches jumped in. And let me say this to the churches. Stand up. It's not your job to stay silent when morality and, and our country is at risk. You need to get involved. And um, separation of church and state was never about the, the government keeping you silent. It was about keeping the government out of your church. So um, it, it's a beautiful thing we're seeing. I would like to ask your um, audience to please visit my website at Lori Mills, the number four stateassembly.com. Again, L O R I M I L L S, the number four stateassembly.com. I am supported 100% by grassroots, small donors. Nobody owns me. I don't have to answer to any lobbyist. My opponent is funded by, by Planned Parenthood. She's funded by all the lobbyists in Sacramento. I need your help. Please donate today at Lori Mills for stateassembly.com. There you go. Well, thank you very much, Lori. I look forward to continuing to follow this campaign over the next uh, few weeks as we get into the election. And uh, the best of luck. And thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity.